Have you left a narcissistic relationship or has the narcissistic relationship left you? Hi, my name is Michelle Paradise and welcome to my channel today where I bring evidence-based information coupled with my own personal experiences to help you navigate the most difficult and challenging relationships, especially the one with yourself. So let's get started. I want to talk to you about seven things you will feel after leaving narcissistic relationship and why they are typical. Leaving a narcissist is probably the hardest thing you will ever do. It's not just about walking away, it's about untangling yourself from someone who's woven into every part of your life. I know this on a personal basis. I may get into that a bit later, but I have been in more than a few narcissistic relationships, raised by a narcissistic father and married a narcissistic man. So today I want to share with you seven common feelings you may experience after leaving a narcissist and why they're absolutely typical. You're not alone. First, let's be clear. Escaping a narcissistic relationship, whether it's with a partner, a family member, or even a friend, can feel like stepping into a completely new world. But here's the twist. It's not always the relief and happiness that you might expect or that you wanted. Because often these feelings are more complex, like grief, doubt, even guilt. And that's why we're here to unpack these. So let's dive right in. Guilt. Wow. I hear this word so often with my clients. It's one of the most surprising emotions, or maybe it's not. But there is a high level of guilt in people that leave narcissistic relationships because you've likely been conditioned to believe that everything is your fault. Narcissists are experts at blaming, shifting responsibility, and making you feel responsible for their happiness. So when you finally break free, that guilt sticks around. Remember, this isn't real guilt. It's guilt that they've trained you to feel. And if that's what you're feeling, know that it's completely typical. Your mind is detoxing from years of emotional conditioning. Number two, doubt. Let's talk about doubt. Narcissists excel at gaslighting, making you question your memory, your perceptions, even your own worth. After leaving, it's natural to wonder, was it me? Did I make the right choice? Was it really that bad? Yeah, that's a big one. Euphoric recall, I call it, because you begin to think about it with rose-colored glasses. And well, it wasn't really that bad, was it? We had some really good times. You're used to questioning yourself because that's exactly what they wanted. But here's the truth. Doubt is a normal part of the healing process. And here's a really great reminder. If you left, there was a good reason. They're not exes for nothing. Now, the next one, number four, is grief. Now, this might seem a bit strange to think that you're grieving the loss of a relationship that you couldn't wait to get out of. Maybe it was suffocating you. But you'll likely feel grief not for the person they truly were, but for the person you thought they were, the one they showed you during the love bombing phase. You're grieving an illusion. That grief is real and it's necessary to heal. And I say this a lot to my clients and I, I also had to say this to myself. I kept waiting for that person to come back, that first person that I met. And we all do this at some point. We wait for that first person. We think he's still there, she's still there. I know they're still there. They're stressed at work. They have family issues. There's perhaps ill parents. We make a lot of excuses for them, but they're not coming back. Maybe briefly, a bit of breadcrumbing here and there, but they're not coming back. Think of this as mourning a version of them that never truly existed. Let yourself feel this grief without judgment because it is real. And sometimes you may also be grieving the time that you spent that you'll never get back with that person. The next one is longing. Mm. Now, another common feeling is longing. There might be moments when you miss the narcissist or even want them back. Sounds odd, right? I know. 
I've been there. But remember, narcissists are experts at creating a cycle of highs and lows. You're missing those highs, even as brief as they may be, even as old as they may be. They might not have happened for years, but you're missing that intense rush from their affection. It's a bit like withdrawal, and it's okay to acknowledge that feeling because it is a form of addiction. We are addicted to them because they've created that addiction. They've created that really us in. Treat this longing like a temporary craving. Acknowledge it and let it pass. Number five, anger. Anger is another big one. At some point, you're likely to feel intense anger at them for the way that they've treated you and also with yourself for staying as long as you did. And we usually do this with hindsight. And let me tell you something. Hindsight is not 2020. Before it's 2020, hindsight is harsh because we never look back at ourselves in a good way. We look back and say, you coulda, shoulda, woulda have done things differently. You get angry with that version of yourself. But know this, that they were doing, that version of you was doing the best it could with the knowledge and the information it had in that moment, and that's it. So here's the truth. Anger is your mind's way of protecting you. It's a sign you're finally seeing things for what they were. And that's true because when you get angry about this relationship, you're healing. Let the anger be part of your healing. Channel this anger into something constructive. Journal it out. Use it to set boundaries or even get creative with it. Start painting your feelings. Start drawing your feelings. Anger doesn't have to be destructive. Dr. Gabor Mate, who I've trained with, has a wonderful expression. He calls it healthy anger. And that usually means that you create a boundary. And the boundary isn't always with another person. It is frequently with self. Come inside and decide what you're going to do. I This is okay for me. This is not okay for me. The next one is relief and freedom. After the initial storm passes, you might feel a huge wave of relief. But don't be surprised if it comes and goes, because grief and all these things, they're not linear. They go up and down. You think you're okay, and then something comes in, a phrase, a word, a sound, a smell, a feeling, and you can go right back into that, that feeling that you had when you were with them. But don't, don't be surprised if it comes and goes, please, because that's exactly how it's meant to be. Narcissistic relationships are exhausting mentally, emotionally, and physically exhausting. Leaving means you freed yourself from a constant drain on your energy. And that, and that is relief. It's a sign you're reclaiming your life. Enjoy this freedom. Embrace it because it's yours. And it's the start of a whole new chapter. Number seven, I love this one, empowerment. And finally, empowerment as you move forward, you may start to feel empowered. And that's a beautiful place to reach. This is post-traumatic growth at its best. Empowerment doesn't mean forgetting. It means understanding. Understanding and maybe having, and this is going out really on a limb here, but, but when you can develop understanding and compassion for them at a distance, keeping them very far away from you, that really sets you free and empowers you. Because it also tells you that, that you're realizing you survived and you're not going back. This is strength. That's all you. This is your strength. You have survived and you're going to thrive. This might take time. People write to me all the time and say, how long does this take? Well, how long were you in the relationship? Sometimes you've been in the relationship for years. This could have been your first and only love. You might have children with them. So give yourself grace and space to heal. It will happen. Keep building the strength. You're reclaiming your story one step at a time. Leaving a narcissist is a journey. I know I've been on it for, for many years. And it gets easier and easier and lighter and lighter and you get stronger and stronger. And it's okay to feel like you've fallen down, but get back up again. Because I promise you, every time you fall down or feel like you've fallen back into those old habits, it will become shorter and shorter and you will get back up again. 
As I said earlier, healing isn't linear and your feelings aren't wrong or strange. They're signs you're finally free. So give yourself permission to feel it all because it's all important. So if this has resonated with you, leave the comments below and always remember if you haven't subscribed already to please subscribe now. Hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching. And remember that you're stronger than you think. I had friends that helped me understand that. I had therapists that helped me understand that. And sometimes you need those cheerleaders in your life, people that, that show you how far you have come because you will probably be the last person in the room to realize how far you have come. Thank you so much for listening to me today and following me. And I'm sending you all lots of healing energy for a great outcome.